Now, the war in Ukraine has entered day 55. The offensive of Russia has reached Lviv, which witnessed multiple airstrikes on Monday. Seven people were killed in that airstrike, while multiple others were injured, including children. Kharkiv was also witnessed strikes. Two people died in the shelling. Multiple vehicles were damaged. In Irpin, mass graves show the severity of the death and destruction that's taken place once a bustling city now completely brought down to rubble. Russia has claimed to be close to capturing Mariupol completely. Visuals from the besieged city shows dead bodies lying on the ground. Recent days, Russia has shifted focus towards eastern Ukraine and is currently preparing to launch a full-blown offensive of the rebel-held Donbas region. The Ukrainian forces are now putting up valiant resilience in face of Russian aggression. But Putin has shown no signs of backing down. Taking, talking about the Western sanctions there, Putin has claimed that West has hurt itself. In fact, Putin has said that by imposing sanctions against Russia, the West has completely deteriorated their own economies. Let me cut across to Moshmi Singh joining us for more on that. Moshmi, uh, give us an understanding on day 55, uh, what the war is looking like in Ukraine. We understand that Russia has reached Lviv, uh, where we hear multiple airstrikes have been reported. Se seven people have been killed, including children wounded. Nabila, uh, I can tell you one thing that this war is uh, going to go on for long and uh, the update is that if you look at Donetsk, Luhansk, uh, now Mikulayev under fire, Zipurisha, uh, the entire periphery uh, under fire, uh, Kharkiv is also being bombarded. Uh, there was some calm yesterday, but uh, day before yesterday, there was continuous bombardment and it's on the edge. So several cities uh, of, um, of uh, Ukraine are under attack. Uh, as President Zelensky said, that more than 30% of the infrastructure of uh, Ukraine has been destroyed. We are talking about a nuclear power plant in Zaporizhia that's under Russian control. And uh, several airports and railway stations have been bombed. So life has come to a stand and still for the people of Ukraine and as uh, you said that several weeks of war the people of Ukraine are also asking when will this end importantly we have a very uh, crucial meeting that's coming up uh, that should be watched closely the American president uh, would be meeting his allies on a video conferencing uh, call uh, to discuss the situation in Ukraine and on the other hand Russia accusing Ukraine of several bombardments in his in its territory so uh, this war uh, clearly if you can see has hit a deadlock and uh, as uh, as Zelensky said that uh, Russia is inten intensifying its uh, entire offensive in the east we are in the east we are in Dnipro Proteska and uh, the entire stretch uh, from Odessa Mykolaiv Zaporizhia Kharkiv is under uh, great uh, stress even as um, we see a continuous attack uh, on several civilian area, several villages, and uh, the people are living uh, in, a, in a state of fear, Nabila. You know, it, it's highly unfortunate that so far uh, we haven't seen any talks between the two countries uh, coming out with a headway. Uh, in fact, Moshimi, give us an understanding. Putin now is almost threatening the West, saying the more sanctions you put on us, the more you are uh, deteriorating your own economies. So all the more, as much as we understand that the West is attempting to uh, cripple Russia's uh, powers uh, to carry on with this war, it seems like this is further emboldening Russia and they're going ahead with this, putting in all their resources on ground. So far, none of those sanctions seem to have really broken their spirit at all. Absolutely, uh, Nabila, you hit the nail on the head because, you know, this war, many say, is more of a psychological battle and it is a psychological warfare of sorts. And even as, if you remember, a very strong condemnation came uh, from uh, the American president when he was in Poland, uh, in fact, accusing uh, Putin uh, of being a butcher. So uh, those are the kinds of jargons and accusations and counter accusations that have been made between uh, between several heads of states, uh, especially, especially if you see that this is a very, very uh, straight uh, con uh, battle between America and Russia. But importantly, as you said, uh, this has to be read between the lines, even as, uh, you know, uh, the Americans uh, deliberate with their allies. They know that the battle is on the doorstep 
doorstep of West Europe. And this is going to impact the entire economy of Europe. On the other hand, Russia is saying it's not impacted by sanctions. Uh, so this is also an economic battle. And in this entire tussle, uh, if you talk about energy, if you talk about warfare, in this entire tussle, the economy of Ukraine is uh, nearing a collapse because uh, people have lost their jobs. Uh, there's no work in the market. People are housed in their homes. There's no food. Uh, many pl places uh, in the east which are damaged. Uh, there's no electricity and water. And they're fighting for survival. They're fighting. So one has to see whether the patience of the people is being tested. So far, the Ukrainian president has uh, done fairly well trying to keep his country united. But as this war progresses into weeks after weeks, the patience of the Ukrainian people is being tested for how long they will hold on is the question. There are questions whether freedom, they are confronted with the question of whether freedom uh, is important and at what cost. So uh, that is the question that has been confronted and somewhere they do feel let down uh, that that nobody is coming to the help, the skies have not been uh, sealed, and they know that uh, in the political rhetoric, lost is the voice of the uh, of, uh, of the people of Ukraine. They know that if it was for politicians to sort it out, they would have, and they are hopeful that probably there will be some light at the end of the tunnel. You know. Uh, thank you very much, Moshmi, uh, for those details. And I really hope that you're safe. Uh, India Today reporters on ground bringing us all those factual details amid those hostilities.